Dear viewers, our topic today is Commonwealth Literature in Critical Perspective. The term Commonwealth Literature denotes the literary works from territories that were once part of the British Empire. The writers of Commonwealth Literature belong to European settler communities. The writers belonging to newly independent countries also contributed to Commonwealth literature. So, this literature was produced by selected countries sharing a history of colonialism. The British Commonwealth of Nations The Commonwealth literature was produced after the establishment of the British Commonwealth of Nations. The British Commonwealth of Nations came into being after the decline of the British Empire in 20th century. The Commonwealth originally consisted of dominions or the countries which were partially independent in the beginning. After the Second World War, the British Crown held no political authority over other Commonwealth countries. Thus, Commonwealth came to mean an association of sovereign nations without deference to a single authority. The shift from colonial to commonwealth implies change in the status of the commonwealth countries from subservience to equality. Contradictions in the term. In the first place, commonwealth literature was addressed primarily to a Western English-speaking readership. Though apparently it aimed at bringing together writings from the world on an equal footing. Secondly, the word Commonwealth in Commonwealth literature carries imperious connotations. Thirdly, the economic and political relations between Britain and the Commonwealth nations have remained far from equal despite apparent parity. Fourthly, the doctrine of common inheritance served to reinforce the primacy of Britain among the Commonwealth nations, despite the ostensible claim of unity in diversity. Lastly, the texts produced by the writers of Commonwealth literature were ultimately to be judged by a Western English-speaking readership. Though Commonwealth literature was supposed to have been created in an, in an attempt to bring together writings from around the world on an equal footing. Charges against Commonwealth literature One of the fundamental assumptions held by the first Western critics of Commonwealth literature concerned the relationship between literature and the nation. In the introduction to a collection of essays, the Commonwealth pen an introduction to the literature of the British Commonwealth the editor, A. L. MacLeod, proposed that the genesis of a local literature in the Commonwealth countries has almost always been contemporaneous with the development of a truly nationalist sentiment. Many critics claimed that new interpretations of life in Commonwealth literature actually reflected national and cultural identity. Despite these alleged nationalist overtones, much Commonwealth literature often played second fiddle to most abstract concerns which distracted attention away from specific national contexts. Many critics were primarily preoccupied with identifying a common goal shared among writers from many different nations that went beyond more local affairs. Assumptions about Commonwealth literature Just as the idea of a Commonwealth of Nations suggested a diverse community with a common set of concerns, Commonwealth literature was assumed to reach across national borders and deal with universal concerns. Commonwealth literature certainly dealt with national and cultural issues but it was able to transcend 
its regional affiliations and produce work of permanent and universal relevance. This assertion is supported by Peter Berry's views on liberal humanism when he says good literature is of timeless significance. It somehow transcends the limitations of the age it was written in. As stated earlier, Commonwealth literature was judged by the canon of English literature. It was really a subset of canonical English literature which was always extolled for its timelessness and universality. Commenting on Season of Adventure, the novel of a Caribbean writer, the critic Walsh says, indeed Lemming's achievement is to make us hear the scream of the humiliated and the persecuted and to make it simultaneously a metaphor for the damage universal in mankind. Walsh condescends to recognize Lemming as a novelist, but in his own terms, not as a representative of Africa, but as a painter of the damage universal in mankind. Critics like Walsh judge the novels of Commonwealth writers not as independent works, but as echoes of English writers. To them, national issues were important, but the universal meaning of these novels were more important. Change in outlook. Many post-colonial critics have challenged their predecessors' critical approach, which gave primary importance to the assumptions of universality and timelessness in a good writing. They insist that historical, geographical, and cultural specifics are vital to both the writing and reading of a text. To conclude, it can be said that Commonwealth literature was developed by the countries sharing the history of colonialism and its purpose was to develop the sense of national identity among them. In the beginning, it was judged by Western standards. However, latter-day critics try to reinterpret it in the light of their own cultural issues. Thank you very much.